Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Artist Works Live Dispatch from Home. Uh, we are here today with two wonderful jazz musicians, uh, Mr. Peter Erskine, um, who is a jazz drum legend, and of course, Howard Levy, uh, who certainly plays a lot of jazz, uh, along with many other uh, genres of um, music. He also uh, is known for playing harmonica and piano sometimes even at the same time. So this is going to be really a wonderful live dispatch from home. We're so happy that all of you are with us. And if you don't know who we are, Artist Works is an online music instruction company and we work with 30, 37 world renowned musicians much uh, the same as Peter and Howard. And um, we are joined by them this evening. And what we do at the top of uh, every event, live streaming event, is we have a tribute, a musical tribute uh, for those people who have been suffering from the pandemic and for all of the strife, really, that has been in the world. Our job we see tonight is to bring some music uh, and cheer into your home, uh, and we want to provide that musical oasis for you. So um, Howard Levy is going to get us started off today with really one of my favorite songs, uh, Bridge Over Troubled Water. So here is Howard Levy to get us started. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. Uh, you're welcome. Some folks are just joining us. So this is, uh, of course, Howard Levy, who started off our live dispatch from home. Um, and Peter Erskine uh, is joining us as well. Uh, Peter, where are, where are you right now? I'm uh, speaking to you from my home studio, which is in uh, the backyard here in Santa Monica, California. Ah. At my uh, University of 
Southern California banner because I'm doing um, so much teaching here, not only for Artist Works, but uh, for USC ah. uh, as well. Yeah. And Howard, you're near <laughs> Chicago, right? I'm in Evanston, Illinois, just north of Chicago, and uh, it's a beautiful sunny day here. Uh, <laughs> I'm grateful. <laughs> be anywhere actually and uh you know we're safe and sound that's yeah. the important part isn't it yeah yeah got to be healthy right yeah that's, that's the important part yep. so it's it's interesting because here, we live in napa for those of you who don't know where artist works is we live in beautiful napa valley and um uh we we were the like the first county to open up into phase two because we had so few cases I think wow. we were actually the best pandemic case in California. So we got to go to phase two first. So now we're the worst. <laughs> now we're the worst. So in the last two weeks, you know, it's been bad. It really has been bad. And I'm not, I'm, you know, it's upsetting. It's upsetting to say the least. We, we had another death today. And oh, I'm sorry. So it's just been... Uh, you know, it just feels like it's a little too soon, but I don't want to question those folks who have made those decisions. But um, we're yeah. staying safe at home, and we're playing a lot more music at home. And I'm assuming you guys are too. Is it what's Peter? Oh, what's oh, been happening with you musically well, uh, and all that? Uh, Howard and I are, are both in in that age group where we have to uh, uh, take precautions seriously. And and I'm going to guess that many of you watching us. In Internet land, uh, Internet might land. be in the same boat. Uh, I think it's natural. You know, I'm, I'm not a, a public health uh, uh, expert, but um, some fatigue, uh, you know, sets in, and, and mm -hmm. somehow it seems like there's been this arrival, uh, this kind of group consensus of, of uh, okay, we're bored. Um, yeah. that's enough of that. And uh, I think now more than ever, we all have to really be careful. The, the luxury that my wife and I are enjoying is that, uh, you know, we, we have a backyard and, and, mm -hmm. and, we, and we love our home. And, and this is the first spring and summer season that I've not been on tour. Right. Uh, so, um, you know, every day I wake up, at, uh, number one, I mean, just waking up is, yeah. <laughs> is a great, <laughs> great way to start the day. And, and then uh, it's like, wow, you know, I'm just, I'm getting caught up on all sorts of things, even if it's just uh, mundane uh, uh, things around the house. But I'm learning about software and I'm reading again and, and practicing. And, and uh, there, there, are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of blessings to be found yeah. in, th in this found time. Yeah, that's interesting. And it's, I think a lot of people have, maybe discovered or explored some new things in their in their lives during this forced stay at home that are going to be permanent you know and i i, I think that's a good thing some some things are good you know i guess if you're just sitting there eating pringles you know all day maybe that's not such a good thing but you know if you're doing good things with music maybe maybe that's a, a positive thing to carry forward but how about you howard what have you what have you been up to at your house well, you know, much the same as Peter. I mean, we're, we're really not going out very much and we're getting our groceries delivered. Are you? Mm. Luckily, uh, my wife is an amazing chef. And uh, so we've been eating wonderfully and I'm cooking too. You know, I can cook. Yeah. A little. Um, and, you know, that, but also like what Peter was saying, I'm not touring at all. And it's, it's just not, it's an unaccustomed feeling to wake up in, my and my own bed next to the person I love every morning, and and there's something really really nice about that, and yeah. to not have to miss that person, um, and then it's just a matter of resolve. I mean, are you going to just become a couch potato, or are you going <laughs> to figure out a way of communicating with people and trying to keep positive energy yeah. at the same time as you have to pay a lot of attention to the what's going on in the world every day because things are changing constantly. Yeah. So. I'm trying to be very vigilant about events and trying to stay in touch with my family and my dearest friends mm. and make sure that everyone's okay. But at the same time, I'm, I'm doing a lot of practicing and uh, uh, 
actually recorded a whole bunch of piano free improvisations that I, uh, I'm going to release as a CD. I don't want to talk too much about it, but yeah, well, that's okay. it was not really intended to be that, but it became that. And, and it's kind of introspective and, and uh, very different from the way I usually play. That's interesting. And, and I've, I've talked to a lot of our artists recently and and some of their friends and so two things come to mind when you just said that howard um i spoke with andy hall who we were going to try to do a live um dispatch from home this week but he said you know he's just had so much time to really think about being a musician and all of this time on the road and you know he along with a couple of other people have said where's the room for that creativity you know you have to stop everything to have that mental space to be creative. And um, mm. I was talking to uh, Bob Minsner as well um, on a, a broadcast that we did. And um, he's, he said, you know, I, now that I'm home and I'm sitting here and I can, you know, have fun with a dog and, and everybody else that lives here, I think I may be working too much. I think I might be traveling too much. Yeah, and I wonder if that's a realization to to either of you, Peter. Is it to you, or do you like it all? Maybe. Well, uh, you know, before the the COVID nineteen pandemic, uh, uh, my wife and I were discussing like, hey, you know, how should we approach these next few years? I didn't want to put it in in morbid terms, like mm -hmm. these these final years, but um, uh, we were already thinking along the lines of of well, what is it that I want to do? And, and I love yeah. playing live, but I really want to do more writing. And mm. um, and I, I want to do more photography. The, uh, oddly enough, the photography thing um, has has been somewhat dormant, even with all this, this, this free time. Um, but I am getting some writing done. I've just gotten really caught up in the excitement of, of the catching up, all the things that, that I haven't wow. been able to get to that have been on my to-do lists for years. However, you said something that, that, that really got me thinking. Um, Pringles. I hadn't considered Pringles. <laughs> and so... You know what's going to happen now. You're going to get a case of Pringles. <laughs> and and, and, bef and you know, when, we were, when we were doing the sound check for this, folks... Um, I uh, I asked Howard something I had heard on um, on a on a podcast yesterday or two days ago the the Daily Zeitgeist, mm -hmm. and it mentioned uh, about uh, how wrong it was to put ketchup on top of a Chicago oh, no, hot dog. No, so I wanted no. to know if that was true. <laughs> and Howard, it, what is it absolutely is true. Yes, ketchup yes. is. Yeah. They they know you're a tourist if you ask for ketchup on your hot dog. I'll just say that. <laughs> this is just not fair. That's I think not they, fair. Anywhere I go, they know I'm a tourist. <laughs> I'm from Pennsylvania. You're supposed to put ketchup on everything. Your mashed potatoes, everything. Because Heinz is in Pennsylvania. Oh. <laughs> my, my, that's oh. true. My my you know my father years ago, bless his heart. He 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 was visiting me in New York City, and we decided to have lunch at a Mexican restaurant. And I, I got embarrassed the way you do around your parents when they say something that you find embarrassing. And, and uh, he had asked for ketchup. And the waiter hmm. seemed confused. And I, I said, Dad, they, they don't have ketchup. It's a, Mex <laughs> it's a Mexican restaurant. He, and, and he just looked at me and he asked with total sincerity, he said, what kind of a restaurant doesn't have ketchup? <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I, uh, Mexican restaurants don't. Uh, well, the steakhouses forget it. I mean, you just—you're not supposed to be putting ketchup uh, on. The chef will come out and get what, you. What out here in California in Napa? <laughs> no ketchup. I mean, they'll come get you. They'll no, come you, get you, <laughs> you, you, you can get truffle sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Only, only if I don't know. I think it needs to be shaved truffles. Oh, oh well. I don't know. I'm making that up. I don't have any idea. Well, uh, Howard, you must miss uh, Napa as much as I do. I think we both need to get oh. back up there and oh, and record great. more content. Oh, it's it's beautiful. 
uh, yeah. it, it's it's like being in France. I mean, it's uh, the it's the best food in America. It, the climate is idyllic, uh, and uh, the artist works people treat you right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't have to drag anybody here, as it turns out. No, people come pretty willingly. Hey, but speaking of you know locations, um, we've got some. I always ask everybody, tell us where you're from, and so. I'm just going to put a couple of names and, and locations up here on the screen in case you might know somebody. Uh, but I want to thank everybody for joining us because you guys just jump right in and tell us where you're from. And so I really appreciate it. Mike Dillon um, from uh, British Columbia, Canada. And Norman, uh, do you know Norman? From uh, one of my best friends uh, in oh. life. Yes, yes. Oh, that's nice. Actually, he recorded a CD on my label at my uh, home studio here, too. Uh, he's a fingerstyle guitarist. Yeah. Oh, nice. Very nice. And Ken Lewis has told me before where he's from. Ken, I forget. Oh, here it is. Traverse City. Ah. Oh, yeah. beautiful place. Look at that nice little avatar. Peter, you went, to, you went to school there, right? Yes, uh, very close by. The Interlochen Arts Academy. Traverse City is the closest big city and that's where the airport is yeah. uh just such a beautiful part of the world bob mincer and i uh met there 51 years ago oh my gosh in uh in 1969 i i started going to school there in 1968 <laughs> um and we were going to have a a, a big hoop de doo of a 50 year anniversary uh for uh you know uh, that graduating class um in in October, but it just got canceled because of, oh. of COVID. I mean, like everything got canceled. Everything life got canceled. Well, it did. But um, as Howard said, uh, you know, keeping an eye on on some things that that are demanding our attention, and um, uh, you know, I uh, despite so many dark clouds on on so many different horizons, uh, I'm, I'm somehow feeling optimistic. Uh, it's that's partly the power of art. It's the power of, mm -hmm. of love and the power of I, I think it's an essential component hope. But um, I uh, I really do think that that some good change is around everybody's corner. I Ooh, hope so. I hope you're right. I hope you're right. Thank you, thank you for saying that. I really appreciate it. <laughs> I do. Oh. It's optimistic. And and how about how about a drum solo? Just to, no, I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> sure, <laughs> Howard, you're so lucky. I mean, you have you have an entire orchestra that fits in the palm of your hand. Yeah, that's really true. He's and, got two. Um, he's got two orchestras, actually. I know, and I, you know, if I if I was on a date with a with a young woman, I I, I don't know. I I guess I could take out my bongos and I. <laughs> I I wrote, wait minute, I wrote this wait just, no, I, I would take out my bongos and I, I would say something like, I wrote this just for you. <laughs> okay, I, this, this reminds me of a great story and I won't, oh. I won't mention the name, but this was a, a well-known guitarist uh, who worked with a number of, of well-known rock and roll uh, artists, singers. And... Um, he would uh, he would catch the eye and the attention of of a of a woman and and uh, would somehow coax her back to the hotel and uh, they'd be in his room and he'd be sitting not too far from her strumming his guitar and mm -hmm. looking at her and then he would say her name and say it again and then kind of f figure that into what he was playing and 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 appear to spontaneously have composed to create this beautiful song in honor of this woman he had just met. Uh, of course, it was the same song that he would use every night in every town. And, <laughs> and the, the fellas in the band and the crew uh, knew the song. Well, one, oh night, one night he's serenading a young, unsuspecting uh, woman and... He starts the song, and one of the crew guys assembled everyone that he could find, and they're all s huddled outside this guitar player's hotel room in the hallway. And when he reached the bridge, they all joined in <laughs> in, in, in incredible <laughs> harmony. <laughs> oh, man, that's a good one. That's a true story. Isn't it? Oh, my Lord. 
Thank you for sharing, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope it wasn't inappropriate. No, it, not at all. It was another time. <laughs> it was. Well, let's say hello to some other folks. Leah is from a town in Washington I cannot pronounce. I don't know if anybody knows that or yeah, not. Yeah, Mukilteo, yeah. Oh, thank you, I Howard. I got a ferry there one time. Did you? Yeah. Wow. Huh. And Edward Wright is saying, sorry, sorry, Peter, but go Bruins. Oh, that's... Uh, fight on but i i have i don't know um i don't really uh pay attention to uh, uh the, the football team or any of the sports at usc yeah. oh well i used um, to i used to travel wearing some usc apparel and people would would start asking me questions about the yeah and they don't the football ask, team yeah they don't ask about the music department <laughs> it turns out <laughs> more and more and more they do okay good well that's good so then here is Sandra, um, who is from Texas. Uh, Bob Leach, Howard, you might know him. I know that name. I, I yeah, can't... he's a student on Artist Works. Oh, that's why I know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> As it turns out. Of course, yeah. Now, Kent is, is weighing in here. He said, it's absolutely true, no ketchup on hot dogs. Yes. So, yes, Kent. All right. But Rich disagrees. <laughs> uh, uh -oh. I'm with you, Rich. Uh, you know, ke well, I don't eat ketchup on everything, but we used to put ketchup on mashed potatoes. No kidding. Mm. Uh, just a couple more here, real quick. I want to say hello to people. Um, uh, Kent Anderson oh, is from Edward. Chicago. Yes, I know him. You do, and Bert Wolf. That yes. is my brother-in-law. And, it. Uh, and uh, he's also a very, very fine musician. And recording engineer and video editor, and my sister wow. is an amazing ceramic artist. And my parents are living with them right now because of oh. the, the, their place went into lockdown, and mm. uh, they're going to soon be moving back into their um, independent living place. Uh, cool. And uh, yeah, love you all, Wolves and Levies. All right, the Wolves and the Levies. And S Susan is. Um, um, an artist work student in multiple schools, and I feel sure that she's in yours as well. Um, thank you, Susan, for joining us frequently. I really appreciate it. Hey. Um, hey, Derek. <laughs> yeah, wonderful singer and keyboard player from Milwaukee. Yes. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. I didn't want to put that one up there. Um, and oh, That's you... why. Yes. Do you remember him? Yes, I do. Okay. And then let's just see, there was one more. Dave Herzing is watching from uh, Pennsylvania. Hmm. Okay, so now I think um, we've said our hellos and everybody that's listening out there, feel free to ask any questions. These guys are here to not only bring music, but to also, you know, reveal the curtain, open the curtain a little bit to uh, kind of behind the scenes, answer any questions you have. So don't hesitate. Please ask us your questions. Um, but in the meantime... I do believe, Peter, maybe you could play a little something for us, my friend. It what would you, you have a, you have like a play along app or something. Tell us a little bit about that because it, it's so cool. And I think you're going to use it to play, aren't you? Yes. Um, my, uh, say hello to my little friend here. It's the iPad. <laughs> um, also on iPhone. Um, I developed a series of, of play alongs and basically they're like music minus one, but with the added uh, benefit that you can um, you can mix and change the levels dynamically of, of uh, and dynamic in a sense of interactive uh, the piano the bass the drums in the case of the big band the first trumpet lead trumpet second trumpet uh, lead alto the first tenor baritone sax trombone bass wow. trombone etc. Um, and and so uh, these function as either karaoke. Uh, the type tracks, or you can you can even solo a track and listen to how a professional, uh, how he or she are playing their parts. And there are men and women uh, playing in this big band. This is Bob Mitzer's big band. This is a oh cool uh, a tune called Tribute. It's dedicated to Count Basie, and uh, so it's kind of in the Basie style. It's about uh, seven minutes. If if that's okay, I'll I'll do a little play along. Is that all yeah, right? Yeah, that sounds right. good. Here we go. One, two, three.
Wow. Yay. <laughs> that was fantastic. Oh my gosh, that was really wonderful. Is so this is the Bob Mincer um is this the big band from Germany? No, this uh, No, this is just his Okay. The big band primarily from uh, the University of Southern California. Wow. About half of the band are faculty at the school. And um and so it's Bob Minster's big band. A lot of times what he'll call his big band is, is just the, the the Thornton Jazz Orchestra. But we're very, yeah. very proud of all the students we have at the school. Well, you should be. You should be. That was fantastic. I'm I, Now I'm more in the mood for, for more music. You know, we had, a, for you folks that are watching, we had sort of a freakish thing happen when we were in soundcheck this afternoon. These guys started playing together at the same time, that's what together means. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it was in sync. Yeah. It, was a weir- it was just so freaky weird. Do you guys want to try it again? But we need, sure. we, yeah. we need a, I think we need a safe word. Like this is not working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, we just want to um, try. The safe word will be latent. <laughs> latent. <laughs> okay. All right. Satan? Well, no. <laughs> Satan. <laughs> you guys, okay. what do you think? Uh, well, let's let's do a little autumn leaves and let's see Ooh. how it goes. This, uh, okay. by, you know, by all rights, this shouldn't work. It should not work. It wasn't supposed to work, and it probably won't work. But it is fun to just try. And if it doesn't work, then maybe you guys could just trade off solos, you know, rubato, right. well, call response, whatever you want to do. But let's hear you guys play together. Okay, let's see. One, two, one, two. <laughs> Thank you. 
never going to trade boards with you, man. <laughs> Why are you just see. working? I don't, I do not know. I do not know. Your piano was a lot more quiet. Like, oh, play your piano right now. Oh. Yeah, see, it's perfectly fine. But when both of you were playing at the same time, it was, you were more quiet than. Oh, I'll turn it up. Uh, That's weird. I don't know what's going on. That's fine now. It's only fine now. That was fun anyway. Okay. So, Howard, let's do a little, let's do a little call and response. Yeah, do that. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll start. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm going to turn off my voice mic now. Okay, cool. This is fun. Very fun. That was good. You guys are you guys are crazy. You know, Howard, it's been years. I think it was. Turn your mic on, Peter. Oh, sorry. I keep forgetting. It's okay. Um, I, man, I think it was like 1982 or something. I I came into a club, uh, somewhere in Chicago, uh, and you were you were playing there, and 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 I seem to recall I sat in. Yeah. Oh, wow. I wondered how you guys met. The Talk piano man. It was the piano man, Eric Hotberg. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh. oh, and yep. it was my it was my quintet. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually I actually put out a CD of some of that music. I have it here. Pick a card, any card. Uh, it was this band. Wow. Oh my god. There you go. And uh, 
the bass player who knew, I don't know if, who was playing bass that night, uh, unless it was Eric and he invited well, I, you. It, it might have been. I mean, Eric Hochberg and I, uh, we, we met back in 1971 at Indiana University. Yeah. Um, in Bloomington, Indiana, and we've been friends all these years. And um, I mean, you and I, we, we know a lot of the same musicians. I yeah. I love Chicago. It felt like a, a second home to me yeah. uh, for a lot of years. And uh, anyway, what a thrill that technology has brought us. Have uh, you guys so, played so together close. before, though? I mean, other than that, what, what's what been your collaboration or? No, we've always. That's crazy. I yeah, know. yeah, it was. Uh... You know, the closest I came uh, was the the Jocko word of mouth uh, band. Uh, I heard that gig in Chicago when you played at the Park West. The Park West. And Gosh, uh, I, the dead of winter. I remember. Oh, yeah. And Randy and I hung out afterwards because he wanted to meet this guy I was playing with at the time. And uh, we, we actually went and sat in at a few places together. And he was talking to me about, you know, since Toots didn't want to do the tour, uh, you know, you're pl he said, man, your harmonica playing is really amazing. I'd, uh, it would be incredible if you were on the band. And I was going, wow. <laughs> I mean, yes. Oh, I wish that it happened. <laughs> no, because uh, you Jocko, know, of course, you know, was disintegrating. and uh, Yeah. Which yeah. is a tragedy. And I, I don't want to dwell on that part of, of him. But uh, that, that music was fantastic. And I'm really glad I heard it. And uh, that was, Oh, well, uh, I, that was a fun. I remember the, the band, the uh, that got put together in Chicago. It was great. There were so many wonderful musicians there. It sounded amazing. And Elmer Brown be, uh, ended up being the lead trumpet player permanently as a result of that, as I remember. Well, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad, and I'm so glad that you're both on the Artist Works roster. And there will be a time when we all, you know, get back to Napa. I'm going to drag you there, and uh, it'll be fun. We need we need to have like a reunion or something. Wouldn't that be awesome? It would you be know, awesome. The Artist Works Jazz Festival. I mean, yeah. Artist Music Festival. I mean, it, the it, music yeah, festival. It, it, yeah, it'd be incredible to you know, all the amazing musicians that are on the uh, faculty. It's incredible. There's no place like it, really, uh, and it's yeah. real. You know, it's real. <laughs> and, yes. you, you, you know, uh, uh, if, if I may share that, I I, I coined a, a term. Okay. Uh, now that we're all in in, in these uh, bubbles. Um, out of necessity, that that we're we're now living in the age of aquarium. Oh, that's good. Yes, that's good. <laughs> I'm so that's clever. True. You are very clever and witty, and you are witty too, Peter. Uh, well, uh, but <laughs> artist artist works works. And, yeah. Uh, oh yeah. You know, it's funny because as as I was watching the the camera, uh, Peter switched the camera angle with one hand. Yeah, that's so cool. To see the overhead view, and I realized that was one of my misgivings about teaching harmonica. You can't see anything I'm doing, yeah, and yeah. so I thought, you know, all these great camera techniques don't really apply. And uh, to my surprise, relief, and and joy, I discovered that yes, I am indeed able to teach an invisible instrument <laughs> yeah. uh, in with videos. Uh, but the other thing I really have to mention this that this pandemic has made me really treasure my interaction with my students more than I used to because it's become kind of the, the focal point of my musical existence is interacting with my students in a way that I'm, I'm uh, it's not that I didn't pay attention before, but that it was a smaller part of the general spectrum yeah. of things that I did. And now it's a much larger part. Uh, yeah. And I, I really treasure it. And the vision that David and you had to start this company um, you didn't anticipate something like this happening. No. The fact that it's happened has actually made artist works more important than ever before. And busier. You yeah. Know. Is, <laughs> we're, we're all busy, and I know you. I know you guys are busy. Um, yeah. And as much as I would love to take credit for the concept of video exchange, it isn't. It was entirely David's. Uh, but I'm very pleased that you use it to the extent that you do, and. And you both are really wonderful teachers, and and I'm so happy that you're part of Artist Works. And I, I see a lot of your students chiming in here, which is is really nice. I'm thank you to the Artist Works students, and for anybody out there who doesn't know what's different about Artist Works, is that musicians of this caliber 
uh, their colleagues have come into Artist Works and recorded pretty much everything they know. Um, and that's not easy to do. They don't usually do it in just one trip, but um, that means you can pretty much learn whatever you want to learn, but you get all these videos, but then you can also um, send these guys a video and they'll respond with the video telling you what they think you might need to work on or what you're doing really well and, and give you some guidance. And that's a video exchange. And we show that video exchange then to everybody in the online course. And so you not only get the lessons, you get to see all yeah, the questions that were asked and the answers that were given. So it's really kind of a cool concept and these it's, guys do it right. It's the, it's the idea of a master class taken to the, the nth or most extreme possible degree uh, in, in a good sense. Yeah. Um, because you've, if, if you want to participate and submit a video on any particular subject, you can. But if you're kind of in wait and see mode or feeling a little shy, um, you can view other students uh, tackling a lot of, uh, of those particular issues and, and, and not only learn things, but gain a confidence. Yeah. Um, because, uh, you know, ultimately, I, th I think Howard and I. Uh, would agree that we just want to express the, the, the great joy that, that can be found playing on the instrument and, and finding that joy by being fearless. Yeah. Oh, those are, those are wise words. Thank you for sharing, Peter. Um, we have a couple of questions. And so okay. let's just take a, f a few questions if we can. Lots of people are, are chiming in. We even have a mm -hmm. friend of yours, Howard, from Iran. Ah, yes. Babak. Babak, yes. Babak. He's a but wonderful player. Leah has a question. And I like this question a lot. How can you improve on improvising? What a great way to ask that question because I think so many people, whether they're classical musicians transitioning to jazz or any, bluegrass improvises too, lots of, lots of genres improvise, but how can you improve on your improvisation? Any, either one of you, Howard, do you want to take that first maybe? Sure, I'll say a, a little bit. Uh, just okay. one very, very simple thing is to be able to sing the ideas that you have. Uh, so obviously, it depends on the kind of music. If it's simple, complicated, whatever, you have to understand the parameters of the music. If it's in 4-4 four, four time, you have to have good time. If it's got a few simple chord changes. But a lot of it is feel and imitation. You know, hmm. listen, to, listen to the people that who's improvising you really love and you imitate. This is how you learn anything. Uh, it, you don't just come out and sound original. You have to you have to uh, understand what's come before you, and then sing. If you can memorize other people's solos, sing those solos. And because the instrument is mechanical, no matter what it is—piano, guitar, drums—and the mechanics of playing an instrument, you have to get really good at that. But the impulse for improvisation should be from you're like vocalizing it, you know. Mm -hmm. so if, you, if you're, if I'm playing Autumn Leaves, now I mean it's. I was singing very conservative stuff, uh, but there's simple chord changes. Most people with a decent ear who are ready to do that can do it. But then mm -hmm. doing it on your instrument is it, a little trickier. So one thing I tell students to do is to trade fours with yourself. Sing four bars, play four bars, stuff like that. Well, that's mm. that's great advice. Thank you. And I, I thank you from a, a musician who struggles to improvise. Um, Peter, have you got any words of wisdom on improvisation? Well, How to just, improve? Uh, just to tag on to what uh, Howard said, which was great. Um, just play what you'd like to hear. And, mm -hmm. and, and it's, uh, I tell all my drum students, it's really as simple as that. Um, it, so if, it, uh, if you can sing it, as Howard recommends, uh, then you can play it and you're hearing it. And, and uh, you know, I, I try not to play what I might try to guess what somebody else mm. wants to hear. I just play what I want to hear. That's cool. Well, we have another question for you, Peter. 
um, specifically about the drum that you're playing. What snare are you playing right now? <laughs> Hi, Edward. You know um, this person. Uh, how, do, how does the snare drum sound? I think he made a comment about that, Did actually. He? I think, well, somebody asked about you getting a good sound online. Um, so this, put, that, put that up. Let's see it. This is a, uh, this is a prototype oh. of a new signature snare drum that Tama and I are collaborating on. It's four and a half by 14 inch, Ooh. a combination of spruce and maple. It's beautiful. And it's going to be a signature drum that is v priced very, very reasonably. So the idea is uh, uh, to get a drum this size into the hands of, of drummers. Um, and I'm, uh, thank you. I, it, it just <laughs> arrived yesterday from, from Japan. Oh. And um, I'm experimenting with it. We we have three three prototypes, um, and this was the one that I requested that they send me first. And they're tooling up some other hardware to make a couple more of them. But if it sounds great, that's wonderful. This is kind of fresh fresh out of the oven. Well, um, it does sound great, and everything you play always sounds great. You're such a tasteful musician, Peter. You really are, and I I love that about your playing. I know that you also are a writer, and you've got ah. a, a book going, so we want to make sure before we close here, we talk about your book and CDs and things like that. Can you hold that baby up there? I wish I could zoom in. What this does is, that say? Musicians this is called, oh, this is the Musician's this Lifeline. Is the Musician's Lifeline. I co-wrote it with Dave Black, and uh, just basically, uh, I sent a list of, of questions, the same seven questions to 250 musicians, educators, uh, uh, classical, jazz, rock, uh, vocalists, conductors, uh, business folks in, 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 in the music uh, world. Um, and I got responses from 165. I think that's a wow. pretty good response rate. And it's just a, 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 a great cross-section of uh, advice. Um, here, here are the questions. Okay. What's the best advice you've ever received? What's the best Oops. advice you've ever given? I'm hearing pings. What's, what's the one thing you, you would have done differently in your studies or in your career? Best travel advice, which right now is kind of a moot point, but all right. Uh, best sight reading advice? Do you have any business advice for a musician and advice relating to people skills? And then, then we got into a little subcategory about auditions, whether you're auditioning for a job or, or auditioning in school. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll give you a hint. Yes. The, the one, the, the most common response to uh, the, uh, the one thing that, that this great cross-section of musicians would have done differently in their study they would have been more serious about practicing the piano. Oh, is that right? That's what's so, come out in the book. That's an overwhelming wow. response. So my hope is that a younger musician or a musician of any age might see that and be inspired. Like, hey, if I was sitting on the fence about piano, all right, I'll spend a little bit more time because uh, it is such a, an important instrument. It's Howard, so I mean, you you play you yeah. play piano and harmonica at the same time. The same this is unbelievable. Time. So he's not seeing uh, anything. I don't. I think you're feeling it. I don't know. What well, are I'm, you doing, Howard? Well, I'm seeing the harmonica as a piano. Oh, is that right? Yeah, oh. because uh, you know, I started on piano when I was eight, and I started playing harmonica when I was eighteen. And so, you know, you you can't see the harmonica at all. No. So, right. You know, you're you're playing with your eyes closed, and and you sort mm -hmm. of kind of aware of these shapes and. Your breath is going both directions, the only wind instrument that does that. And uh, so after a while, I started thinking, like, what, I'm seeing something else. What am I seeing? Mm -hmm. And it turned out that uh, I'm seeing the keyboard. I'm, I'm superimposing the scheme of the piano keyboard on the harmonica. And that's what allows me to play chromatically on the diatonic harmonica. I'm the, pretty much the first one who's ever, not pretty much, I'm the first one who's ever done <laughs> Say it, um, Howard. So, uh, and, and that's the scheme of the key piano keyboard is what enables me to play the stuff I play. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's the mental image. Wow. Yeah. 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 That's, and I think a lot of <laughs> all that stuff, you know, 
Yeah. Incredible. I think that a lot of people that, that play the piano can relate theory better mentally. Like if you say a minor third to me, I immediately think of C and, and E flat. I don't think of anything I'm playing on the flute. You know, I've, wow. I think of theory as the piano. It has been such an incredible tool for me. And I, I know, Howard, when you were in our living room, which is Studio A, <laughs> recording your, <laughs> your lessons for Artist Works, you kept saying, well, I need to show it on the keyboard. And I said, they, people might not play the keyboard. You can't do that. And, but, you know, it, it's true. A lot of people don't play the keyboard. But it, it's true for me that I visualize a lot of things on the keyboard. So for those of you who don't play piano out there, it might be helpful. It could be a missing link. You never know. You never know. But, Howard, you have a CD coming out. Or what's what's going on? I didn't mean to change the subject yeah, too quick. I, but... uh... I don't know where I put it. You and Jethro, Howard and Jethro, right? Yes, yes. Uh, it's Jethro Burns was uh, this fantastic mandolin player. Uh, he's really revered in the in the mandolin world. He was a really a, like a swing and jazz mandolin player as well as playing uh, bluegrass and all that other stuff. Uh, but all that other stuff. His, uh, <laughs> his, I mean, the things you'd expect to hear on mandolin if you're in America. I mean, yeah. so. But uh, when Jethro was playing jazz on the mandolin, he was pretty much the only one doing it. And he really loved Django Reinhardt. Uh -huh. And uh, so someone put us together for a concert in 1983 mm. and uh, recorded it. And I found the cassette of oh my that gosh. in my attic. And that's what's on the back cover of the CD. Ah, Look at that. And that's it's, so cool. it sounds surprisingly good. The sound was really good. And uh, so I remastered it and, uh, and put it out. And also includes a lot of uh, Jethro's spoken introductions. He was hilariously funny. He was a, a member of this com country comedy duo called Homer and Jethro. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh, I know that one. Right. They were very famous and uh, across the spectrum of American music. And the reason why they were so such great clowns is that they were both such great musicians. Yeah. Uh, it, it was there was just never anyone like them, and uh, Jethro played the mandolin like a bat out of hell. You know, it, it was. <laughs> so I'm just very happy to have this out. Of course, the CD release party. Uh, was canceled. We were going to have it at a at a place in Evanston where Jethro lived, um, with a with a great mandolin player who's protege named Don Sternberg, the mm -hmm. wonderful player, and uh, and a very good bassist and uh, guitarist. But we'll have to wait for another time to do that. Well, hopefully it's going to be sometime soon. And I'm I'm glad you both have things going on and. That's really important, and there will be a time when we all get back out there and we can meet again. That's for sure. That's going to happen. Oh, I know yeah. it is. <laughs> so uh, we're going to close out here, but we um, have to do it with music. Like, that's the law. There's an ordinance here in Napa. Any live streams have to close with music. So we're going we're gonna to abide by that. So you guys decide... What do you think you're going to do? How are you going to do this? I don't think we can do it. Oh, dear. <laughs> That's perfect, Peter. All right, Howard. Ooh, a nice one. Oops. 
<laughs> we don't know what just happened. We the internet, what just happened. the internet fried in the middle there, but you kept it going, man. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was wonderful. This has been fun. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Peter. Really, always wonderful to have you uh, in any conversation. Um, Personally and musically, it's it's always wonderful. And Howard, in, we've been friends a long time, and I always enjoy seeing you in person, of course. And, and this is the best we can do right now, and I'm glad all three of us have been together. And I want to thank everybody that's joined us. I know there were a couple of questions here we didn't, didn't quite get to, and I apologize. You can always ask us questions in these live events, though. We will do our very best to um, get back to you. Um, so uh, as we say goodbye, are there any parting Parting words that uh, you guys would like to share? Um, well, from uh, Howard, I'll, I'll take the floor first. Just uh, everybody stay well. Um, there's still a lot of curves to be flattened. And um, let's all do our part to, uh, to make the world uh, a good, safe, and healthy place. And I, I, I hope that everyone will be able to return to their jobs at the same time. Whatever you do, keep washing those hands. <laughs> okay that's good don't touch your face what what do they say wash your hands don't touch your face <laughs> howard did you just want to say goodbye yeah i think peter just said it very uh you said it all right now so uh just just thank you thanks for asking me to be on here today and uh thanks for everybody uh, who watched and peter it was wonderful to play with you and i hope we yeah, howard. get to do it in person all right I'll look forward to that okay. thank you guys be well stay safe stay off the thank streets you. Bye, play, everyone. Play more music. All right. Bye-bye. Well.